New RTS games are mostly good, but there are also those other ones, so keep watching to find out about the good, the bad and the ugly RTS games of 2023 and beyond. War Pause is a pure and lighthearted RTS where dogs battle cats, inspired by none other than the legendary Z game and its red vs blue robots, because of which I almost smashed my Sony PlayStation 1 back in 1998. I know, I know, but I was really young and losing made me rage furiously. In the end, I only broke the game disc in half, and some furniture my console was on by throwing a chair at it. Then a year later I got Z again and I played through the whole game, winning all 20 missions. Such bittersweet memories. Anyway, apologies for the digression, Warpaw's store page is already up and you can see this trailer with cartoonish inspired art and slapstick humor as our furry pets duke it out in an alternate world using World War II inspired weapons and tech. They fight on different biomes from deserts to lava flows with destructible environments and the focus will be on unit management of specialized soldiers. Do I need to bark my orders at you boy? Let loose the dogs of war! Besides the single player campaign, you'll be able to play in various multiplayer game modes like regular versus matches or king of the hill and in co-op against the AI. Unlocking new types of units and other elements will be done by capturing strategic points on the map itself which also holds environmental hazards you can use to your advantage like frozen lakes to drown enemies or trick them into swimming with sharks. This is a kind of fun first game the strategy genre sorely needs to bring in new generations of players into the world of RTS games, which have been lacking enjoyable access points for inexperienced players, something that Sins of a Solar Empire 2 for example certainly isn't. This massive scale almost 4x space sci-fi RTS was released as a technical preview on the Epic Store and while a lot can be said about it, not much can be played. This current version is bare bones with only the TEC faction in skirmish mode, but it showcases some of the new features included in the sequel. The it will be updated monthly based on player feedback and upgraded in stages with multiplayer and other factions during early access in 2023. Its new features are a whole new 64-bit multi-core engine, plants which now orbit and move on the map, and players will be able to tailor these into specific and specialized colonies. Other new features are turreted ship weapons that will track targets along firing arcs and point defense weapons that will shoot down enemy missiles mid-flight. Look, I know all the hate is on Epic because of these timed exclusives, but I try to view it as a way for games to get through an early access period paid by Epic and not us gamers. Even though a lot of people have thrown their wallets at Sins 2 already, which shows us just how many fans of this franchise and its host of amazing total conversion modes there are. If Sins 2 was a mix of good and bad news, here is some plain ugly news, which certainly will not help the RTS genre live on and expand with new players. Terminator Dark Fate Defiance no longer has a development team working on it. It was announced with both a cinematic and a gameplay trailer back in December of 2021 and since then its publisher Slytherin hasn't released a single news update about it, while the game has store pages on multiple gaming platforms and even a 2022 release date. It is quite obvious now that there will be no such game release anytime soon. A real bummer for all of us hoping to finally play an RTS game set in such a famous universe. As for a game set in our own world and one of its worst periods, we have the famous developers from Petroglyph Games to thank for. They are taking us back to the grueling warfare of the First World War in a game aptly named The Great War Western Front. There is a lot of info but little footage of the game yet, so we know you will be able to play as either the Allied Nations or the Central Powers and direct whole armies as theater commander in real time on persistent battlefields filled with trenches, tanks, artillery and gas attacks while also having to first research those new technologies and plan every offensive. There will be a campaign, skirmish and multiplayer modes to play in. 
You have probably played more than one game these developers made in the past since they have a long history of developing RTS games, including Star Wars Empire at War, Universe at War, Earth Assault, Grey Goo, Forge Battalion and even working on the latest Common and Conquer Remaster. Do tell me which of their games are your favorites in the comments below. Unfortunately, there is more disappointing news coming as the developers of Neuro Slicers stopped production due to limited funds and no prospect of a publisher. This game was to be an actual cyberpunk RTS with narrative-driven gameplay, strategic territory control and a resource management system. They had plans for fully voiced NPCs, a single player campaign, competitive esports multiplayer and so much more. It is a game which could simply not be funded because most executives in suits see us RTS gamers as both too small a customer base with low acceptance of new concepts and a very hard bunch to monetize besides just buying a game. But there is also good news for me to share from specific RTS and RTT franchises which have managed to grow sizable communities and get a sequel, like Man of War 2 for example. This World War II themed, historically accurate and action filled game is bringing new units, locations, whole narrative campaigns and entire fresh game modes for us to enjoy. Battles will be recreated on both the western and eastern fronts with the use of sophisticated military strategy and ambushes but also brute force with armor, air, infantry and support units of all three sides numbering 45 battalions and over 300 vehicles. The sequel promises visual improvements, an advanced AI, realistic physics and destructible environments where we can blast entire buildings and landscapes to bits. Separating this game from its competitors is the direct control feature, where you can manage any single unit on the field at any time and change, upgrade and repair equipment and vehicles. So get ready for a deep dive into the combat mechanics as you play skirmish and challenge maps but also in co-op. For the creative types, there will be a special level design and modeling toolset so you can create and share your own war scenarios. If you can't imagine your RTS with no base building and prefer the Cold Steel era, then Manor Lords is the indie gem you're waiting for. The latest city building demo of this wonder mix of a game showed us, and the whole internet for that matter, the heights of quality a lone indie developer can reach. I was speechless as I replayed the demo multiple times and can now only be even more hyped for the real-time strategy battles which are the second core part of Manor Lords. Let's all hope we get a demo of that as well in 2023. On the other side of the indie development spectrum you have Star Exodus, a space sci-fi single-player exploration and survival game which was to have a narrative very similar to the one in Battlestar Galactica TV show. But as it turns out, it was only a concept game which never reached proper development and with no news for years, planets, battleships and alien races might as well have all dropped down a black hole. The reason why I even mention games such as these in this video is to raise players awareness of such fake projects and to also show the ugly side of RTS game development. On the brighter and AAA side of things, we have the most recent news of an Age of Mythology remaster subtitled Retold. Coming from the 25 year celebration party of Age of Empires, this news surprised many and it was welcomed almost universally because of the promises that came along with it for updated graphics, new features and an all around definitive edition makeover which sounds like the expansion pack with the Atlanteans and the Chinese factions will be included. Another thing that crawled out of that Age of Empires party was a mobile version of it which I don't even know what to think of. I mean there are Homeworld, Company of Heroes and Total War mobile games now as well so it's not like RTS games do not have some mobile representatives but honestly I could never get myself into that kind of touchscreen RTS gameplay. If you have had some experience with those games do share it with me in the comments. One of the most anticipated new high budget RTS projects is Tempest Rising and I already showcased all the fresh gameplay and units from its first developer interview link up here and below. Before that we saw the amazing trailer and the first campaign mission which I also covered in great detail 
while addressing the obvious Command & Conquer comparisons. Those have divided the audience between those who appreciate the nod to that franchise and those who do not approve of the look of CNC mixed in with features from StarCraft. What sets this game apart the most, for me at least, is the fact developers and publishers are committed to releasing a full game day one, meaning two campaigns, three factions, all the units and buildings, and an entire array of multiplayer options. You would think this should be standard, but if you look at similar games which have been released lately, like Crossfire Legion for example, and now Sins of a Solar Empire 2, you see only the skeleton of a game which has everything added post early access release and from your comments on my videos and social media, I can see you are fed up with this kind of an approach. And frankly, so am I. Here is another perfect example of this. 2089 Space Divided. It was released into early access consisting of a skirmish mode against the AI and a wave defense mode along with two factions third in development. I mean, most of the RTS gameplay is there. You collect three different resources, construct buildings, recruit units and fight on the local map. But where is the hook? What is special? What is different? What would make me want to play more of it after a few skirmish battles? And it's not just this game. Developers of Commanding Nations have produced and released into early access something similar and while I was and still am optimistic and enthusiastic about it, it also lacks that special something to give it an edge over dozens of similar products. You can say the development of TFC The Fertile Crescent went along similar lines and since then those developers have been working hard on adding new content like multiplayer and making the game's early access version worth buying. And this is where I think a line needs to be drawn about how little content the game can offer in early access, because I feel like developers have been testing just how little they can base a purchasable product on, something that was a demo 5 years ago is today deemed an early access product and I don't like where this is going. Nor do I think it benefits these games to be exposed to a cruel and unforgiving audience in their skeletal form. Not that I'm calling all you cruel and unforgiving, but you certainly don't pull any punches in your reviews and comments pushing away other potential players. But honestly, that is as it should be as you are pushing back against this new trend and it is your right to do so. If you all thought that was bad, let's take one out of the ugly pile. There is a game called Flooded on the Steam store with the RTS tag, while its idea is for it to be a city builder on an island that shrinks over time with occasional attacks by waves of enemies. You don't recruit units to fight off these enemies, you build traps and towers. I mean, yes, you can stretch the definition of genres and their subgenres, but this is too much. Period. But if you don't mind playing a game with a stretch definition of an RTS, then you should try out Beneath the Mountain. This is an underground warrant city builder, which does have actual units for you to recruit and fight with against the horrible creatures invading from the dark depths. Developed by just one person with an ear for player feedback, this game might not have huge scope, but it does have a unique setting, various buildings, construction on multiple underground levels, as well as resource management, unit recruitment and combat against the orcs and other creatures waiting to ambush you behind every wall. A similar stretch of the RTS definition is the Valiant, which I talked about in more detail in my previous RTS video list linked up here and below. The squad based and medieval themed game is already out now and in full, which is looking more and more like a trademark for its publisher THQ Nordic. It features handcrafted single player missions with cinematics and narrated journals, while also providing a great competitive multiplayer experience with rank play and cosmetic progression. Indeed, it lacks space building and has a lot of customization of your units and hero squads which is why I said calling it an RTS in the classical meaning is a stretch. Now I want to talk about several fully fledged RTS projects which have all the proper elements you would expect. Most of them are still in early development, but some already have playable versions. 
This is the case with the Mortal Gates of Pyre, a fantasy version of StarCraft with the added feature of godlike spellcasting commanders known as Immortals, which has a playable alpha version and even tournaments. Its impressive visuals are already heading to the next level as its developers move to the Unreal Engine 5 in preparation for a 2 vs 2 tournament. The gameplay is very straightforward, you start with the main base and some workers collecting resources at hand, but with many places on the map to expand. Once the economy is up and running, you recruit units, scout your enemy and get into first skirmishes in a growing battle until you lose your base or destroy the enemies. All four current immortals have special ultimates, powers you can unleash on your own units like invulnerability or just plain destructive spells on enemy units. The developers are actively working on keeping these both fun and not overpowered, which is certainly not an easy goal. And speaking of hard jobs, making a proper CNC general successor seems to be a holy grail for indie RTS game developers, as yet another team is trying to do just that with Requiem Nuclear Song. I have been in direct contact with these developers every step of the way, even offering up some name suggestions for their game. Unfortunately, my idea didn't get voted to the top on their community poll, but I like the one they ended up with nonetheless. As you can see from the gameplay, it doesn't deviate from the classical resource gathering, base building and modern unit combat with different factions you, me and everyone else would want from a new generals game. I will keep following its development closely, so expect more updates on it on my channel. Another full-fledged RTS, but in a mythological setting, is Godsworn, where pagan gods and their tribes clash against crusaders and armies of heaven. Here you have actual heroes to control, besides the regular units and mythical creatures, so it has some similarities with Age of Mythology and Warcraft. Currently there are two factions, the Baltic Tribes and the Crusading Order, which are a blend of Nordic, Slavic and Finnish mythologies. Almost all units will have special, active and or passive abilities on autocast to let players focus on heroes, but this is subject to change. And those heroes in God's form get unique skills that are unlocked as the match goes on and you gather more worshippers. There is base building and resource gathering as you need those to train your army. Once it's ready for early access, it will have several skirmish maps, a few missions from its campaign and most of the so far designed heroes. Multiplayer will feature up to 8 players in custom and cooperative skirmish matches. There are in fact a number of other indie games which aim for this kind of proper RTS gameplay, with different base building and universes in each, but which all suffer extreme development slowdowns due to the real world being such as it is for these last few years. There is Argent Seas, a futuristic naval and ground focused game with a homeworld like huge mothership and limited ship production, with some amazing simulations of ship to ship weapon combat, missile interceptions and tanks conquering islands. It has huge promise, but a chronic lack of developers and funding. Next is Mythos Slavic Builder, which had a great start, an amazing gameplay trailer reveal and then no news for a long time. It showed us exploration, mythical beasts, settlement building, god worshipping with tech trees of godly powers and even viking raids. I was really hyped for this one as it checked all the right boxes in my book, but unfortunately it looks like it is in development hell now. Another game which has huge hurdles preventing its development is Middle East Crisis, a hyper realistic real time strategy from developers who come from nations in perpetual war in real life. It was to have a full storyline with gameplay like in CNC Generals and several factions. These would be based on real events, real maps and real army units, so basically an authentic modern war game. One of these games, which I really wanted to see finished, is The Last Cohort, as its idea was to combine RTS elements with small scale tactics in separate mission scenarios which made it seem like Stronghold, and its setting wasn't far off either. There would be lots of different resources together and crafting of materials your soldiers need to protect your keep and riches. Developed by a single person and with very little progress of late, it is another one I fear we will never get to play. Additional RTS games whose development is really slow are Dawn of Empires, a fantasy based game with base building, 
Age of Space, a sci-fi real-time resource management game with tactical ship combat, Neolithic First City States, a historical ancient world game with huge scale, Project Titan, another large-scale game but in a futuristic setting, War Hospital, a World War II themed game with the focus on saving lives, and Eon of War, a sci-fi survival RTS with indirect control of starships. Now, I want to put the spotlight on a game whose developers are trying to offer something unique to their potential players. An alien creature called the Modu, with the ability to grow different organs, split and merge them as if they were your units, and by which this game got its name, Modu War. This novel approach to building, well, more like growing units, is definitely the game's most interesting feature, but it also has a full story to go along with it. You will learn how the Earth Repatriation Expedition, a faction of humans in the far future, managed to get the selling creature to work for them, but also choose will it remain loyal to them by the end of the single player campaign, which takes place on a mysterious far off planet. In addition to the regular multiplayer and skirmish modes, there will be a monster arena mode for you to enjoy with friends and other players. Before I show off a few more games, I want to pull out another game from the ugly pile, and because of the specific situation surrounding it, I will not even say what it is called, as I don't want to give it any publicity. But what I will say is take a look at these screenshots of one of the most anticipated games I covered in my previous videos, that one being Falling Frontier, and then look at the screenshots from this copycat game. The resemblance is uncanny, down to the UI color tone. I reached out to the developer on his Discord channel and got this reply to my question of what his game is inspired by. You can judge the merits of his reply on your own. It is one thing to revive a very old game and use it heavily for inspiration, but to do this to someone's game which they have been making for years and haven't even released yet. I honestly don't even have further comments, but you can give me your own down in the comment section. On the bright side of RTS game development, we have Ancient Wars Medieval Crusades, an offshoot of the already released Ancient Wars Sparta Definite Edition. As the name suggests, this new game is set in the time of the Crusades and the civilizations you can play will reflect that. There are Arabs, Crusaders, Byzantine Empire, Mongols and Russians, and all are asymmetrical with their own heroes and special units and buildings. These factions will battle it out in three historical campaigns, but also great historical battles, competitive multiplayer and co-op with several game modes like Classic, Skirmish, Conquest, Domination, Imperial and Survival. Other features include a campaign and map editor, realistic physics and naval combat, mercenaries, spies, different weather and a complete RPG-like unit experience system along with dynamic AI and 8K graphic support. For a more sci-fi setting, we can take a look at Annihilate Dispense, where you can build a huge base and audacious numbers of combat spaceships to try and destroy the enemy's base. Your fleet of tiny drones, light attack craft, corvettes, destroyers, battleships and giant capital ships is autonomous so no need to micro them. They have their own AI and will attempt to do their best job as part of their fleet, so you are free to give more overall strategic commands and direct production of new vessels. This game features all three planes, X, Y and Z, so spaceships can fly up, down and around enemies. This means battles will span the whole of 3D space. There will be 4 campaigns to teach you about the game's universe and its factions as well as how to gain access to new units and technologies. You will also be able to play in skirmish mode against AI on custom maps and use the level editor to create and share your own. See more new and upcoming games by using the cards on the screen. Thank you for watching and happy gaming!